welcome back. If you've been uh, following the nice to have uh, versus, versus must have series, uh, kids are taking a good nap today, so we're just going to crank them all out on the same day. Um, wanted to just do a quick video, same thing if you watch the PRS or the reloading one. Um, basically, just kind of the gear I see as a must have if you like to get into uh, do an NRL hunter match. Um, I will show a few things that are, are nice to have. There's honestly not many. I feel like everything I'm going to show is, is pretty close to a must have. Um, but we'll go over it quick. Um, as I said in the past few videos, everyone's budget is different. Um, you know, and everyone has, has, I guess, different, uh, kind of a, opinions on things, views on things, whatever it may be. So as always work with what you have. If you have a rifle that'll qualify for an NRL hunter match that you can shoot, you know, get out and shoot it. Um, there are different classes. If you're unfamiliar, there's factory. Um, I'm not super familiar with that one, but there is a certain list of factory rifles that qualify that meet, um, the NRL hunter uh, requirements. Um, there are some modifications you can do, which are all listed on the rules page on the NRL hunter website. Um, moving on from that, there is open light. That is what I typically shoot. Um, this is a defiance anti X with the proof research carbon fiber barrel and 25 Creedmoor, um, with a Leupold Mark five, uh, mil PR two. Um, typically, and I did upgrade, uh, to an area 409 bolt knob. If that looks a little different to some, just wanting something a little bit bigger to hold on to. If I have gloves on or something like that, typically this runs in a manners, uh, LRH. So they're light, uh, they're lightweight hunting stock, um, that, and I run the MDT triple pull and that'll get me in right at 12 pounds. So 12 pounds and under for open light. Um, and then there's open heavy, which is 12 to 16 pounds. Um, that's where, how it's currently configured would fall into. Um, the first match I'm shooting this year, uh, here in Colorado will be, uh, as a team. And for teams, you can be in that open having cat, open heavy category. So we just need to be, uh, 16 pounds or under. So I just take it out, throw it in my MDT ACC elite just for some extra weight. Um, as configured, this will put me right at about 16 pounds. Um, you know, absolute worst case scenario, maybe I drop a drop a sunshade or something like that, save three ounces if I needed to. But um, again, MDT ACC Elite, obviously not really a hunting style chassis, um, but for teams, I do try to get that extra weight. Um, and again, I run the triple pull. I'm not sure if you can even see it on camera there, but if you're unfamiliar, it just gives you a ridiculous uh, amount of length. Um, some have said that it's almost cheating or, or gaming uh, the system. Um, well, I am ultra competitive and it is a shooting competition and anything that is allowed that I can do that will, I think, give me some sort of edge. I will 100% do it. So plus if I did go hunting like coyote hunting or something, I would, I would 100% use that. But, um, so this is the rifle again, run it in 25 Creedmoor, um, newer barrel, just started breaking it in. Haven't done load development yet. So I run the 135 burger long range hybrid targets. Uh, don't know what I'll be running them at. I do have to hit 2815 feet per second to meet the power factor. Um, but moving on from rifle, um, we'll get into the other gear that I think is, is absolutely essential uh, to have, uh, starting with the tripod. Um, doesn't need to be a big, a big fancy tripod by any means. Um, you are going to need a tripod to, to spot from or find targets from. Um, this is a fat boy. Uh, it's a traverse, I think it is. Uh, it's a three leg section one. Um, and then I run a really right stuff anvil 30, um, on the top, which I took my rifle off already. But essentially if I do need to shoot off of it, it's just super simple to adjust, um, you know, find my target, get level and then clamp back in and it's rock solid. So that is what I run for shooting off of. Um, before that I used to have a ball head, which I didn't think was super, uh, sturdy to shoot off of. So I used to use a tack table, um, just clip a tack table in there. Um, this can stay on your tripod the whole time. Um, so I just used to take a bag, throw it up here. That's how I ranged. That's if I needed to shoot standing or high kneeling, that's how I shot. Um, you know, some people have taken some smaller bags, um, maybe like this cold tack bag here, uh, 
and you know found a way to to strap them on or velcro them in so they're in there permanently so you don't have to take the time to to get a bag on there so a um, couple different options tripod 100 percent needed whether you're using a tack table a uh, ball head something like the uh the anvil 30 um, what i do now is i just get it out to a kneeling position and i just put this right over that uh, ball head or that anvil 30 to spot with and then if i need to shoot i can clip in if not i just take my bag and go so uh this right here works for me you know so whatever whatever works for you whatever gear you have just use you know use what you have um but obviously bag um if you watch the prs video definitely bag is essential um what kind of bag you know totally up to you this is an armageddon gear game changer it has the light fill in it so it's super light so when i'm trekking it around these hunter matches i'm not having a heart attack um and i actually because it's so light um i just clip it right on i have a loop on my pants i just clip it right on my pants so it stays exposed so when i run up um actually i run a sling on the the tripod so that's actually not in my bag i have it slung over my shoulder i'll run up i'll open my tripod just to the low kneeling unclip this bag throw it on and then i'm ready to go from there you kind of get into the next piece of gear um, which is range finder um, if you have them or if you uh, you know have the funds to buy them range finding binoculars are i think definitely the way to go um, you will see some people that will spot with regular binoculars um, you know and then pull out a handheld range finder to range the targets um, again go with what you have so if that's what you have make it work um because it definitely does work um it just saves time find them range them all at once so uh, these are the revix uh the new revix they released um end of last year i think the blr 10b um i like them they have built on built-in ballistics you can adjust the range on the fly or the wind on the fly uh, ran them for two matches at the end of last year absolutely love them um you know, I came from the six hour three Ks. So this was a pretty good upgrade. Um, I have looked through the, the 10 Ks and a lot of the vortex, uh, binos clarity wise to my eyes personally, uh, these were a big step up. Um, haven't had a chance to compare them to any Swarovskis or anything like that, but, um, these are the Revix, uh, pretty pricey. I use them a ton. So I think money well spent there. Um, but going off of your, your range finder, your binos, um, what you want to have yeah i would consider this a must-have piece of gear so you're not wasting time trying to dig rhinos binos out of your bag things like that uh just a bino harness um almost all the shooters will wear these obviously just uh straps over your shoulders there this one is the uh, alaska guide creations don't know uh it's a newer one it's beefy i really like it, it fit my binos has a nice uh magnetic uh clasp back there and you can add different stuff on so I'll throw my Kestrel in here to do wind readings and stuff before uh, before the stages or uh, check environmental things like that if I need to. But I would definitely say some sort of harness so you're not digging uh, in your in your bag for it. Um, and then going off of that, you're going to need a bag, right? All gear is carried with you all day if you're unfamiliar. Ammo, if you want drinks, snacks, whatever. Um, I carry toolkits, um, things like that. All needs to be in the bag. And it all needs to be stowed other than your rifle and you can have an optic so binoculars if needed um, in your hand at the beginning of the match so i used to have an eberly stock um, this one is made by fee who outdoors uh, colin falson's company is actually a match director up uh, just across the border from me in wyoming um, i think he geared it kind of specifically around the nra hunter or maybe a short like one day hunt or one day match um, for a big game hunt i think it might be a little small but obviously has a lot of uh attachments on it for molly um if you open it up there's a bunch of different storage compartments uh strapped through your tripod I'm not going to do a full review on it but you do want a good pack that can keep your stuff um you know the majority of my stuff is is usually clipped onto the outside if i need to get it on a stage stuff like ammo brass bags that's not because i don't need it on on a stage obviously um then mags obviously talk about this in prs i have seen some guys shoot general hunters with top feeders um you do have to start with that uh, unloaded and your action open so you will need to load that on the clock so if you can make a mag work um definitely the way to go and i 
not necessarily needed. I wouldn't want to shoot a match without one. Mag holders. Um, I run two. I run the short action precision. It's kind of my front or primary mag because you start with your mag out on each stage. So I know exactly where it is when I get there. I can throw it in. I'm good to go. And then I do run a cold tack one uh, farther back just with a backup mag in case I have any issues. So mag, you know, if not, go with what you have, make it work, get out there and try it. Um, but you do need a way to write down and figure out your dope, whether you use, uh, these are some hard dope cards. I don't even know if you'll be able to see them, but that I've written, um, these are my backup ones now because my binos do tell me the dope. Um, so I arrange my target. I write down my elevation. I write down my wind, um, for target one, two, three, four, depending on how many there are on each stage. Um, I actually don't even write down the range anymore. Don't even look at the range. Uh, just look at the, the dope. So, but you are going to need something to, to write it down with. A lot of guys will use these, uh, these arm boards, um, or maybe a, a little note card, um, that they could just stick stick onto something like this sticking off the rifle. Um, you know, this is just another thing that will count towards your weight, uh, when you weigh in. So, um, however you find that dope, right. I use my binos. Um, if you can use your binos, great. If maybe if you have binos or rangefinder that will sync up to like a Kestrel or something like that, great. Um, the first match I ever shot, I had my SIG 3Ks. They do sync to the Kestrel. I was too nervous to do it. I thought they were going to like disconnect on a stage. So I just used a hard, hard dope card. Um, it worked for me. Um, you know, I just wrote down what my range was, found my range. And then I have a dope card from win from the left and win from the right, since that does affect your elevation a little bit. But um, it worked. I shot well, ended up placing really well, was, was very happy with it. Um, now I, with the Revix, I kind of do the, the lazy man way and it just gives me all the information right there um but really those are your your must haves um nice to haves are going to be things like chamber flags i like to use a short action precision one to uh, keep stuff from getting in my action um another nice thing that i use i don't see a ton of people use it i will have my pillow bag um, i just clip it right onto the outside um i shot a match in oklahoma i think i posted a video actually i shot it as a team don't think we touched this once. Um, I shot a match up in Cody, Wyoming. I did not film and I used this a bunch. It was super high angle shots. So we were up on a mountain shooting down and my bag, I was shooting prone off the top of the mountain looking down. This bag wouldn't get me high enough. So I had to put this one under it and then this, and it was a whole thing, but used it a lot. Um, definitely not, not needed. Kind of just a nice to have thing. I throw on it super light. So for me, it's kind of like a why not situation. Um, you know, other things, ammo novels, I touched them on in the earlier video. For 100 matches, I do run the tab gear ones because they are, um, they're very hard. Um, so I'm not worried that if my bag gets tossed around or something that my ammo is somehow going to get damaged. Um, same with brass bags, just nice to have to, to keep all your brass. Um, and then you are given a score sheet at the 100 match at each stage, the RO will write down the score and uh, signature it in case there's any uh, discrepancies with the uh, electronic score. So uh, the match notebook thing from Coltac is nice to just uh, have thrown in your bag. Uh, but that's really about it. Um, you know, check out some videos. If you're unfamiliar, check out the website, see the different classes. Um, you know, maybe you have a, a rifle at home that, that will work. Um, they do also have a skills division. I guess I forgot to mention that. Um, it's quite a bit cheaper to shoot the skills division. I want to say close to half the price. Um, you do not qualify uh, for any sort of prizes or for the grand finale or, or championship. Um, if you shoot that division, um, but you do not have to meet any of the requirements for weight classes. So, um, I have a buddy this year. I think he's going to try it out. His gun is like 17 pounds and there's nothing else on it he can shed. So instead of getting a new chassis, barrel, whatever, um, he's just going to shoot in a skills division to see, see if he likes it before uh, making that investment. So um, definitely something to take a look into. Um, this is really everything I would have with me. I do have a little fix-it sticks kit um, that I throw in my bag in case anything would happen. You know, other than that, just a little kind of lens cleaner for my scope. Uh, I'm a big guy, so I need some snacks in there. Um, 
you know, wh whatever it may be, but, um, it all fits in this, in this backpack, which, you know, again, not, not very big whatsoever. Um, without a problem, this bag is usually typically empty. Um, so again, that's everything. Uh, just wanted to, I guess, crank out all these videos on one day if, if you've been following or watching those. But, um, you know, hopefully if you're newer or maybe interested in uh, checking out a hunter match, um, you know, watch some some videos out there. I know I've posted a couple. I know I think Phil Vallejo has posted uh, at least a few stages. I don't know if any full videos, but you can kind of see how it works. Um but really you just gotta, gotta get out there and do it. So, um, I'm going to shoot here in Colorado in about a month and a half as a team. I'm going to try to film that and, uh, post it just so more people can kind of see what it's about. Um, and then I will shoot up in Laramie, uh, Wyoming in the middle of April, um, as an individual. And I will film and, and post that, uh, as well, uh, barring any technical complications. But, um, again, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions about any of the gear, um, I shoot that 25 Creedmoor. I might do a quick video on uh, kind of my load development for that as I'm doing it throughout the process. Um, it's the first caliber I've started breaking in since I uh, started doing videos, actually. So I might do a quick load development. So if that caliber is something you're uh, interested in, um, you can see what bullets I shoot, what speed, how I do my reloading process because everyone does it differently. So um, check that out. Um, otherwise, I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.